It's common practice to specify a source and target table from the same file during a scripted import. For example, you might have default values you want to populate the main system with. And it may happen over and over and over again, so people don't want to manually enter it. They want to hit the button, the script, that says, hey, pull in these default values or these default values and put them in there for me so I can you know, add to it and change it however I see fit. Now, what I have is a very, very, very simple example of an import script. We actually have two tables in here. So if you look at Manage Database, there is the tip and the import. Not very complicated. In the fields, we have field 1, 2, and 3. And then in the import, we have field 1, 2, and 3. If we take a look in the list view, that's where the actual import values are, Fred, Matilda, Joseph, and so on. Back on the form view, this is where we want to import them into. And if we click the button, it works great. It just pulled them in. Now, normally, you'd have some type of find or go to related record or selection by the user so they could say, hey, we want just these records from the defaults. But I just made it real simple because that's all we need to demonstrate what we're trying to do here with the variables. So let's mess it up. Let's make it so it doesn't work. So let's go into our script workspace. And we're going to go into our startup script. We're going to take this out. I'm going to disable it. We're going to go ahead and save it. And then let's take a quick look at our import script. Notice what's in here. Under specified data source, the file, you can see we have two references. One to the name of the file and one to the variable that I'm declaring the current file name in. So you look over here, this is actually putting get file name in there. So it's taking that file name and storing it in there. So I'm referring to that in the source here, or I should say in the data source. I'm specifying dollar sign, dollar sign, file name, and we'll get into why we also have the actual file name in here. So let's close it. Before we get out of here, let's take a look at the data viewer. You notice that in the current, we have dollar sign, dollar sign, file name. That's because I ran it once on open. This time when we open it up, though, it's not going to have that value in there. There we go. Come over here to the data viewer again. You notice that there's nothing in there. That's because we took and disabled that script step. So let's find out what happens when we import. Well, let's delete all these records. And let's do the import. Still works great, right? Because we have that uh, file name direct reference to it. Let's delete all these records. Close it. Change it. This often happens. I'm just going to put a 2 at the end here. Open it back up try to do the import and it says a file dollar sign dollar sign file name could not be found it is required just giving the first choice at the top and it's going to ask you to locate it. it will locate it but that's not really what we want we want it to know no matter what so if we come in here now into our manage scripts and enable that step save that close it close it Still name file name too. We open it, do the import, it automatically adjusts. It knows even though inside the script. If you take a look at it here, even though it specifies file name without the two on it, we could change it here. It has this and it looks at this first. It goes in order in this dialog. There's a return right here. So it's going to look at this and if it finds it there, then it's going to go ahead and use that. Simple as that. Now, why do I have file name.fmp12 here? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and close this, rename it back to file name, come back in, go into our script. Now, normally this stuff will match, right? Everything you look in here will match. What I'm going to do in this case is write a new script, import test. Put on the import here. And you'll notice if I try to specify the import order, there's no source or target. Even if I come over here to the file and put dollar sign, dollar sign, file name, 
that's not going to be good enough. I can't still I still can't specify the source. What I can do though is come in here while I'm programming, add a reference, and then I can specify my source, write my script, create it, do whatever I need to do, and I can either leave it inside there in case I need to edit it later. I can now at this point once I've set it up. I don't really need this secondary choice here. I can actually take it out if I want. But I usually leave it, leave it in there because it doesn't cause any problems. So what I'm saying here is that I don't recommend global variables very, very often because global variables clutter up the data viewer and make it unusable. If you have all kinds of global variables in there, then you have a problem. You can't use it very well with the script debugger. But there are some times when global variables make sense, such as this time. We need this dollar sign, dollar sign file name available throughout the file at any time. So we need to have it in there. Just watch out about how many you put in there. But if it makes sense, if you can't do that feature any other way without a global variable, then it's time to use one.